thing that was great about him, though, is like no matter what what was happening on the field, his personality was always the same. Right. Like you was never beefing. It was always just about uh, the ball. Right. You we, know what I'm saying? We, 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 I talk about it. But we Look. would go out. <laughs> we would before we hang the night before, right? And for the game, we warm up, we come give each other dap. He'd be like, Bruh, see, after the game, <laughs> and we go out that bit like we don't know each other. Hey, that's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> and after the game, we'll get show love. Hold up, limitless, take a simic cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Take a simic cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me. Well, what's happening, man? We back on the pivot. And I see it. You know, we got a dog. We got a dog. We seen a so we seen we seen a lot of cats from the West Coast reinvent themselves over and over again. Dr. Dre has done it. Uh, Snoop Dogg has done it. But the dude we got today has done it in a in a different way. And you know, I'm a little nervous sitting over here, Channing. Mm -hmm. I'm be honest because it's that's how he had your own game. Because day. it's two of the best I ever played. <laughs> yeah. It's two of the best I ever played. So I'm gonna go on and hand it to Freddie T and let him introduce our guest. You don't need no introduction. What's happening, man? Yeah, he, he really don't. <laughs> International. What's happening, Beast man? mode. What's, What's up, baby? Man, I can't call it. But man. but but Bless since you asked me to do it, I want to do it the right way. Do it the right way. Ten thousand yard rush club. Mm. People people forget that, but that's that's elite category. Ten thousand yard rush club, Super Bowl champ, and potential Hall of Famer. God damn, bro. We caught up with you. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. It was just due time. It was due time, was but due but time. but my 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 question to you though is uh due time. because because you know what people know who you are, and people know what you stand for, and we love it. A lot of athletes are afraid to sacrifice their realness for a check or fame or oh, some of that shit. shit. You gotta waste no time, bro. I ain't wasting no time, bro, because the, right. right. the people love you. But the people love you, and ironically, the corporate people love you. Subway love you. Yeah, how that work? Everybody love you, bro. How does that work? work? How? How does that work, Sean? How does that work, Man, bro? I, shit, man, I can't lie to you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to run that till the well dry up, straight up. But I really, I really don't, you feel me? I, you know, I niggas like to take a lot of credit, like, you feel what I'm saying, though? But I had, I had some, uh, I had some, some great leaders early on in my career that, you feel me, I feel put me in a position of learning. And I don't think I was really getting it early on to the fact where, like, I, I just couldn't get, I couldn't get right. Can't get right. I we couldn't always get there. right, you feel me? And no matter how many times I done up, it was always genuine when they came to me and hollered at me about the shit that I had going on. You feel me? It wasn't nothing that was going on on the field. You feel me though? It was more of the off the field shit. And no matter what, them niggas turned their back on me. So it showed me something. It showed me something that you money came by and that was loyalty. And no matter, like I said, no matter what, they always came and they always was giving me that ism. So little did I know, I was really picking up on that shit. So then when it was time to pivot, all of that shit just made sense. Right, right. And, and then we, it was just like shit, all, I'm just rocking with it now. And we all, we've all we all been through it, right? We, I think we've had this conversation before, especially when you're in high school, you know, you're young, you really don't understand it, and you're doing young shit. And though you have these guys back in your hometown at the crib, they pushing you this way to steer clear and do what's right, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you have those veteran and those guys in the NFL, they see something in you that you don't see in yourself. Right. But if you pass through the bullshit, you know, and, and, and buy enough time for yourself, you can pivot and, and get to this point. But bro, I haven't seen anybody parlay what they've <laughs> done. I, I'm serious, bro. I've been waiting on this. Yeah, that, the that, people that, been that, waiting that, on that, this. That, I've been that, waiting that, on that, this. Blessing, bro. You see how much I'm talking? That's a blessing, bro. I don't talk. Talk about the what blessing, you, bro. bro. You feel me? Sean. I appreciate Sean. it. Yeah, We've been at this a blessing. month. This the most Freddie T done talked in one minute that I've ever seen, bro. Well, look, like, man, like I hope he continue to, because I'm here to soak up the game, man. I'm here to get the ism. You feel me? It's been somebody who I done been watching, you feel me, since I was a jit. Mm -hmm. 
So you feel me to be sitting, you feel me across from me. Then he run down, you feel me, he run down my numbers and shit. And it's like elite, you feel me, though, company. And it's like, yeah. damn. Yeah, it's real. It's I'm real. looking at, you feel me, at greatness. I mean, it's all through the room and hella shit. But, you know, I'm talking about shit. I'm talking Russian attack on Madden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't nobody <laughs> tackling Freddie <laughs> Freddie. <laughs> hey, man. Sean, I ain't gonna lie. I was out there and I wasn't tackling him either. <laughs> We talk about it all the time, man. Yeah, I tell him, tell him like he dog. gave me more trouble than any running back I ever played, and I put you in that same category, man. And like it's crazy sitting here and you know and having these conversations. And in my opinion, both of you dudes are two Hall of Fame running backs. Like I don't think that's a that's a question. I don't get a vote. When you look at though where you started your career, like I was making the joke before we all started, right? I was like, am I lineman? <laughs> I was like, I was like, am I lineman? Like, I swear, if I had money, I'd take him to the sizzler. You know what I'm saying? When you look at who Marshawn Lynch was at that point, and now where you are, you're, you're, you're a media mogul, man. Like, you're actually a media darling. You got to go to Super Bowl media day and say over and over again, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Mm. Was there any fear in doing that over you? It was like, that's just who I am. No, nah, it wasn't no fear. It was more, you feel me, at the time, you feel me, what was going on. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a lot of shit. In most situations, the best thing to do is, is, is dumb it down. Yeah. And what I made it about was I was making it about the game, and they wanted to make it about a media frenzy type situation. Right. So you got two people who see two different things and two different goals at the end of the day, while they trying to make they, you know, they, 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 they networks and all the other shit, you know, happy here to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Like all that other shit is irrelevant for me though. You feel what I'm talking about? But it wasn't like if you looking at that situation, it's like, oh, he doing that for uh, just to be different and stand out, this, that, and the third. But if you look back, I've been doing that shit. So it ain't like it was nothing different or nothing new for me. So to answer your question, just who I was, just who I am. I know you for years. I tell some stories. I'm tell stories. <laughs> you always got some stories. But I, I, yeah, I know I got stories. So I'm gonna tell some stories a little later on about you know saying that the stuff that me and me, me and Sean did and the fact that players can hang out the night before the game. I don't know if y'all did it. Y'all can add on when I tell hey, the how? story. Chan, I ain't gonna lie. Your boy was sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You was you you was a little square. A little <laughs> bit square. I love you to death. You a little bit but square. But you my dog though. I ain't tripping. I respect it. I respect it. But, 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 but Sean, that's the funny. He out there quarterback and everything. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but you can still you can still yeah, party still and go out there. Right. Right. Cover right. four, cover three. Yeah, yeah nigga. Hey, right. hey, Shane, right. Shane, do I have to go to Tootsie's? In order to be a good football player, you know though. what? You might have been a Hall of Fame if you bought that. You got to be a dog but, to go to Tootsie's and then wake up and do it that much. But Sean, this is the thing. It's funny. You just you was just talking about you was just talking about that. I'm here because I don't get fined. Because I'm here because I don't get fined. But that was strategic. And when you did it, I didn't even talk to you about it. But when you did it, I knew you knew what you was doing. That's the one thing. Like people, people, you know, what I'm saying, and even that look like like Fred's first question about you not changing. Not trying to reinvent yourself or nothing like that, just being you. All this stuff is strategic that you do. Damn, and you know what, bro? From the outside looking in, you feel me, it, it, it could seem that way. But then when, you feel me, I'm a running back. So my thing is, you got to be ready to react. Mm. You ain't going to get that hole every time. So when you don't got that, what you going to do? You gotta improvise. You gotta yes, make sir. some shit work in order to get to where you need to go to. So when all that shit pop off and it's like everybody trying to they, oh, what, what's this? What's that? You feel me? They making it bigger than what it is. And at the same time, my mind just I'm play football, bro. Like, <laughs> can we just can we get down? I'm ready, I'm ready to go hit something. You feel what I'm talking about? So, you know, on the way to those media uh situations, especially after the first one, you know, everybody Saying, oh, like, what, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Like, you all, oh, oh, like, and it's like, damn, like, be cool, bro. I, I'm gonna just be me. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And everybody sitting on the edge of their seat waiting to see what I do type shit. And it's like, y'all know what the fuck I'm gonna do. I'm predictable. I'm gonna be me. And, and that's the crazy thing, right? When you, especially when you're dealing with the NFL, right? There are so many rules and, and, and 
uh, guidelines in place where guys typically aren't allowed to have fun and be themselves and be genuine. You know, and the people on the outside, they see it, right? It's a big business. And everything that we got going on in the NFL today, especially with the, 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 the coaching situation, the hiring or the lack of hiring of the black coaches, you know, people are really frowning upon, you know, what the NFL, it, it's like the, the, the not fun league, even though they try and do things to market it up, you've always stood, you know, stood for what you believe in, no matter what the sacrifice or the consequences were. Yeah, man, what's some big ones, man? God damn. And I think most guys should be the same way. You know, Brian Flores, mm -hmm. he's given up potentially never coaching again yeah. to talk about the discrimination and the, the inequality when it comes to black hiring and stuff. What's your take on that? Uh, I mean, like you said, with this situation being that, you know, to come down to, you know, him not being able to coach again. And I mean, maybe in the NFL, but you know how, like, how I see it, everybody looking for their opportunity to capitalize on it. So I believe somebody going to take the opportunity into giving that man a job just based off of his situation and what he went through with knowing that that nigga just had an unfair advantage right. off rip. Right, right. So I, I believe that, you know, with the world that we live in, you know, everybody is looking for, you know, that opportunity to give somebody that second chance and or Oh well, if I bring him in and then it do good, look, I'm I'm the hero who went and right. did X, Y, and Z, and then you know if not, oh well, you, oh you see why they went and did what they did type shit, you know, in order to cover their tracks and hella shit. But when you talk about strategic moves and some more shit, I see this being an opportunity for somebody to make a move and uh, you know either clean up this situation or expose it for what it's really worth. And I listen agree. to you talk about strategic, right? When we think about strategic moves, there's, there's, we've been through it, Sean. There's no one more strategic than the NFL. Damn right. You feel, you feel me? So if I'm, so if I'm the Houston Texans, if I'm some of these teams who don't have a coach, bottom line, Brian Flores could coach football, right? And so he's basically saying that the NFL won't allow me, a, a black coach, to be the head coach of a football team. They're conspiring against me. A strategic move to me, though, I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm a hire Brian Flores. One, because I believe he's a good coach. Two, because the rest of the owners, right, the rest of these teams could go, oh, well, shit, what you going to do, Brian? You got hired. So clearly there isn't racism. Clearly there isn't an issue. And what we know from a team like the Houston, Texas, if that junk ain't working out year one, I can fire you because my bank's big enough to pay you, David Cullen. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at that situation, what's the what's the chess move for black head coaches? You said the chess move? Because it got to be a chess move, right? Because checkers ain't working for us. We've been playing checkers for years. Because well, the th right. think about this. The RC, thing you did next? was made chess moves. RC, the Rooney rule was 03, right? Right. Yep. 03. 03. It's 2022. Mm -hmm. 16 coaches. What's that? Is that... Fred, are you gonna do the math? Out of 129. You know, I'm math, hey, right? I'm a math. Hey, no, no, we know Fred can't but do listen, the math. What I do know, I'm, I'll do 19. the math. What I do know, currently, sit no here, no right. bingo. Right. But as we yeah, sit here today, no it's one head coach and three minority coaches. I know that fucking much. Yeah. You, you carry on. But I'm saying, 19, 19, 19 years later, the Rooney Rule doesn't work, though. The Rooney Rule, the Rooney Rule is given the NFL. And it's also giving white owners an opportunity to say, at least I abided by the regulations. Yeah. But when we look at what Brian Flores is alleging, how do you prove that racism is involved? Right? Because, because the thing is this, I'm comfortable with you. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable with Marshawn. I'm comfortable with Fred. I'm different than all of y'all. But I'm comfortable with y'all because I understand it. Right? So the same way, where when I'm in an interview with Brian Dayball, right, and I'm the New York Giants, and I've been around for 100 years, and I've never had a black coach. Think about that, bro. 100 freaking years, and they've never had a black coach. It's, it's, it's hard to prove it. You know, straight out of the gate, it's definitely hard to prove it. But I think those text message uh, exchanges between uh, Brian and Coach Belichick, yeah, a little different. you know, I, you I got mean, it, it clearly shows that, um, I don't know if they call it tampering, but it shows that, you know, uh, the Giants were just attempting to 
bring him in so they can checklist mm. and get the Rooney rule out the way, right? And we hide. So I mean, so, gave him an interview. Exactly. So with that, I mean, that that's 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 an insult, you know. But for Coach Flores to, you know, keep his chin up and still go in that interview, we talk about the audacity of hope. He was hoping. You know, to get the opportunity mm. to still be Can I ask you a hired. question, though? Can I ask sure, you a question? Even sure. in that, from, from a devil's advocate standpoint, mm -hmm. the rule doesn't say you have to conduct the interview with integrity. It doesn't say you have to that's, conduct that's the fact. interview with the intent to possibly hire. It that's says you have to conduct the interview. So what we are talking about, we aren't talking about um, giving the air that the, pro the, the process is flawed. All we're saying is Brian Flores is trying to prove that there's racism involved in the process. Right. Do you think it's possible for him to prove that? It's, it's going to be tough. It'll be tough. Anytime you scream racism, it's going to be tough. And it's all opinionated. But mm -hmm. w when you look at how things are, are, are stacking up and how things are aligning, it was nine vacancies. And, you know, quite honestly, right now at this point, you know, we haven't hired or they haven't hired a black guy to fill those spots, right? It'll be a tough fight in court. I know B Flo. I know he's passionate. I was in New England when he was on the Patriots staff. I know he's hungry. I know he's passionate. I know he always wanted to be a head coach. Uh, I don't think he would, um, you know, just initiate these claims simply to gain some sort of uh, fame or be in that spotlight. He's never been that way. You know, if you're coming from the Belichick coaching tree, you always want to fly under the radar. Ain't no but, fame in this, though, right? No, like, there's no you, fame. Like, you make this claim, you may never there's, coach there's, again. There's No, hold up, Chan. There's no fame, but this can change the history and the outlook of the NFL. Okay. This is really, we're trying to, we're trying to send a message to the country club. Because if, if if we look alike, it's easier for for me to invite you in my home. But Freddie, y'all just said it. Y'all talking about the racism. The Rooney Rule is racist the towards thing white is we, coaches. But the thing Isn't is, the Rooney Rule racist? The I, you have to talk that's to that's affirmative black action. Yeah, <laughs> we all the we all rule. know it's racist. And I mean, you know, the fact that we still fighting to expose that is racist. It sounds like problem. we still behind the age. So I have a question. No. Are you saying it's racist toward white coaches? It's just a racist concept. Explain okay, that, please. Let's say I like Asian women. I've dated Asian women Here my whole go. life. <laughs> I, I, you you know put what? the shit into perspective for I, me, man. I'm going to end this with a Marshawn story. You know what but what I mean? let's say I like Asian women. Okay. I've only dated Asian women. Okay. New York Giants, 100 years. Mm -hmm. Only had have, only have white coaches, right? White hair coaches. Only white hair coaches. All I did for 100 years was date Asian women. And y'all force me to date a black woman, or date a Hispanic, or date a Native American. I'm, I'm gonna make y'all happy and take them out, mm -hmm. and we are gonna have a conversation. And I'm, right. eat, I'm, 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 I'm a vegetarian now, so mm -hmm. I don't need all that meat. Hey, stuff. Channing, okay. can I ask you a question? No, 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 no. I don't, no, don't want to cut you off. I have a question though. Would you bust her if she was throwing it? Hey, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you ain't gonna turn it down. Yeah, I ain't, yeah, I ain't, I ain't. Listen, I tell you, Coochie's is a punt. And I always fair catch it. I ain't gonna run it back, but I'm always- You ain't gonna run it back? <laughs> I'm always man, gonna fair catch it. Man, take it to the house, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 them two, them two minutes was a fair catch. Uh, That's all I got for them. But I'm saying, like, it, it's- no, Hey, you so should kill the you, position. If you, if you force me to date somebody that's not my type, I'm not gonna marry them, I'm not gonna go with them, I'm not gonna give them a job. To, right. to, to relate it to the coaches. Right. But I'm going to date them because y'all make me date them. Right. The Rooney rule is racist and it doesn't work. I was never going to marry anybody else if I like Asian women other than Asian women. The Giants loved Caucasian men for 100 years. Mm -hmm. And now you have to just throw a black dude in there and let them take him out for dinner. So here's my question. Take him out for dinner. Can I ask yeah. question? So, on, so, man. Smack so, the booty. So I played for, I played for Pittsburgh, right? And, and we got Mike Tomlin as a coach. Uh, Mike Tomlin was a Rooney Rule interview. Uh, I felt like Art, I felt like uh, old man Rooney accepted that rule and looked at that rule as, okay, we're going to interview him, but we're going to give him an actual shot. Legit and Mike, interview. A, a legit interview. Yeah. And Mike Tomlin comes in there and he wows them. And so he's been the coach for a decade and a half. 
when you look at the rules, I feel like that's the way it needs to be approached. And now, I did an interview um, recently, and they asked me, do you feel like the rule has been made a mockery? And I do. It is. Right? And, and the only reason it's been made a mockery, though, is because in life, we breed off familiarity. Right? We breed off of comfort. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, the way we look at life is, I want to be in atmospheres where the people sound like me. Right? Like, if, if you tell me something, like, no matter how different we are, when you, tell it, when you tell it to me, I understand it. So I feel like when you now relay it to the team in the same way that we agree, they will understand it. And so I, I, I don't believe that hiring coaches is racist. I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I do believe it's racial. And so in that, how do we find a way to fix that problem? It, you know what? Now I'll get right back into Sean with that. Because of the fact that do you have to change? Because we just talked about it. You never change. You never change. You never lined up with what they want you to be. He didn't line up what they wanted to be. He absolutely changed. He evolved. Did, did I don't you, care what nobody uh, says. Sean, Sean changed? Marshawn Lynch evolved. He never played the game. He didn't play their game. But he always understood what he wanted the perception of him to be. And that's part of evolving. Right? He was a guy in Buffalo who I thought drafted in the top 10, top 12, was one of the best backs in the league. But there was off the field stuff that mm. kept him from being perceived that way. A lot of it. <laughs> when he got to when he got to Seattle, he realized I have I have Hall of Fame talent, mm -hmm. but there are some of these things I'm going to have to hone in order to become beast mode. In order to the fact that like kids all over Seattle are pouring Skittles in their mouths every time something happened. He evolved. He may not have changed who he was, but he evolved as a human. You agree with that? This is, this is what, let, I mean, let I, before I, you no, say no, 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 I, I am, I am. But what I want to say, I, I am, because um, I, I hear you, right? He didn't change. I didn't right? say he changed, I said he evolved. He, he did evolve. But I, I would like, I, I think you grew. I think you just, you, yeah, you just yeah. grew up. You, you there peep, you go with that. You, you peep the game, bro. bro did, Freddie, man. see, there you go with that. Man oh, from, watch me be this so man cool from Oakland. and everybody think I'm never, so dang smart. Never, never. I mean, no, you ain't gonna say that. Sean, get Sean, get it. Sean, get it. Sean, get it. What happened? What happened, Sean? What happened? I'll let you say it, bro. What I think is more so, bro. I did. In the in the in the grand scheme of things, so you feel me with with everything going on, ball off the field family life you feel me just all the shit uh you know i had to i had to look at some shit if i continued on the path that i was you know going down then maybe i'm not in the league so maybe we don't have you know beast mode or what people have known for beast mode to be beast mode probably would have been oh that boy was good but that motherfucker just couldn't get right mm -hmm. so he had the opportunity to hall of fame talent this that and the third but he had the potential to do it but he just couldn't, right. couldn't turn it. And that's the story. And within the yeah. within the parameter of things, you feel me? I, I believe it was more so being accessible. And when I shut that shit off, and I got the, I say, focus on me and what it was I was trying to accomplish. A lot of other shit didn't matter to me. What were you trying to accomplish? Though, you said, what was I trying to accomplish? Yeah, you say like focus I, on things you were trying to accomplish. I mean, what at, those at, at that time, like I mean maximizing my, my 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 opportunity and my potential mm -hmm. to be the best running back that I could be along with shit I mean we all play the game and win the win the, win, the, win the big dance right and shit the talent that we had around us the coaching staff and all the shit it looked doable so I want to give me and the rest of my squad the opportunity to go and do that so in order to do that I knew I had to be on the field I knew I couldn't be on the field if I was doing what I was doing off the field right Exactly. So therefore, I just had to modify some shit. I ain't putting it in your face. Am I doing what I do? Yeah, I am. Just not in your face. What you say when you say well, I mean, modify. Well, I, I mean, shit. Well, I, you know, yeah, uh, Oakland nigga, I'm, I, yeah. I had to pivot. You know, I'm, I'm wide <laughs> open. Pivot. I'm gonna I'm come pull up to the, shit. Maybe the Christmas team party with my fifth of Hennessy and my goddamn and my coat, <laughs> and everybody looking at me like, what the? He brought. You feel me? And then it was more so like, oh. If I don't bring the whole fifth and I just pour half of the fifth in this <laughs> water bottle, 
then they just think I'm drinking some water. Or you feel what I'm saying? So it's now, dog, right, hey, bro, it was just simple shit hey, Sean, like that, Sean, though. I'm not intelligent, <laughs> the, but dog, I know Hennessy no, I does mean, you not know, look I'm, like Fiji. I'm saying as far, I'm saying as, <laughs> no. far as a, a bottle and not the, yeah, you feel I me, mean, the whole it, handle yeah. of the fifth, you feel me, just sliding through. I don't yeah. Yeah. Had it coming in there smelling like a pound, you feel me, smelling like a big tree. Pivot. You know what I'm saying? If you got to go and pivot to go a different direction. Was there a point that happened? Did it happen naturally through time? Or was there something that happened? Was there a distinct thought in your mind when you started to evolve? Well, Not well, change, I mean, evolve. Well, I mean, as I as I was growing, when I got traded from Buffalo, you know, from being, you know, one of the youngest in the, uh, in the locker room to going to Seattle and being one of the oldest, and motherfuckers is looking at me like, hey, OG, what's up? How you do this, that, and the third? And it was more so like, oh, shit, you coming at me for advice type shit. Then it was like, oh, Oh, now I'm the OG now, but I'm still young and learning at the same time. So at the, you feel me? When somebody come in and give me, I mean, ask me for some ism or something, and I'm looking at them like more so like, damn, I can't tell you what to do. All I could do is give you some insight on my, uh, my experiences and you know how I worked it, but what worked for me might not work for you. Right. So you got to find what that is for you mm -hmm. and get into that and do that. But the pivot, I think, point was something that happened with me was with all this shit going on and, you know, it wasn't even, I won't even say it was sport related, but it came a point in time where, you know, I wasn't seeing eye to eye with, uh, I wasn't seeing eye to eye with mom. And I didn't talk to her for like, probably like three weeks. And you feel me? I just was having this feeling like something just ain't sitting right with me. You feel me? I'm doing my thing on the field, all the shit. You feel me? in my transition of, you know, I would say calming down or not being, you know, out there for everybody to see how I'm really rocking the hell of shit. But when it come down to it, it was, okay, I stay in my lane, I do what I do, but I'm feeling a certain type of way and I'm like, man, I don't know what the fuck is going on. So, you know, I hit moms like, mom, whoop, whoop, hollering at moms like, yeah, this shit, that, the whoop, whoop, this, that, and the third. And, and all of a sudden I just, I felt complete again. And I'm like, oh shit. I was missing something. And just I calling was, her, you feel like that? I was missing my fucking mama. Damn, you feel bro, it? I'm a mama's crazy, boy at the heart. And, and that was something that clicked in me like, oh, I need to be hitting on all cylinders. This is, my mama been my rock since forever. Well, is my rock, you feel me? And, you know, not being able to have that, even if it's just calling and telling her about the game or, you know, calling and telling her, oh, shit, I was walking through the, through the dark and I stubbed my toe and like, damn, mama, that shit hurt. Hell, you feel me? Because my mama, mama gone. She gonna rock, and right. she hella funny. So you feel me? Just having that type of conversation, that type of love, I'm like, damn, I was missing that shit. Right. And that was affecting me, my 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 mother. Your being. My vibe and shit. Yeah. And it was like, I got that shit back, and it was like, okay, well, I need to be hitting on all these cylinders in order to be complete. Now at the end of the day, I want to be happy. I done talked to a lot of my who left this game, and they just wasn't happy. Right. And then I mean, you know, with the situation we having with, you know, uh, players, they you know, that they say they losing their mind or CT, this, that, and the third. I need to do every mother thing that I can in order to be happy so I can be complete. So I have a question. You said, you was like, dog, protect your chickens. Protect I was just thing. about to can run into you, that. Can you, mental, can, 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 in your yeah, mental, yeah, mental, mental and your chickens. Hey, can, 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 like, what, what, what prompted that in you, bro? He just you said he was what? the OG in the locker room. <laughs> what prompted that? Yeah, yeah like, what, just, what made you, because like, that's a, because like, when you said it, I got it right away, <laughs> right? But it's because there's a language we speak. Yeah. There's a language we speak that's different, you know? And it's not many of us who can get in front of the microphone. You know, like I always felt like when I'm in front of the microphone, I have to speak in a way so everybody understands me. Right. Right. You said that, and the minute you said it, I was like, oh, I get that. Yeah. What made you feel comfortable in saying that? And also, what compelled you to say it? Well, that's the part about why, you know, you look at it like, oh, shit, uh, when you say change in a situation, like, I don't feel like I've changed as far as who my person is. But the way I talk is the way I talk. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, if you're an individual who don't understand what I'm saying based off of my, my slang or, you know what I'm talking about, the way I, why, the way I speak, then I mean, <laughs> I don't feel I'm talking to you. It ain't no disrespect to them, but right. I mean, when I'm spitting what I'm spitting, it ain't for everybody, but I know that. But the motherfuckers who needed it, they get it, they understand it. Now, if you can resonate with it, 
then use it. If not, keep it pushing. Right. And that's what I love the most. I mean, you just spoke on your mom. You know, who would ever thought beast mode? They see you running up the left man, and right. Man. They they see this 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 is this images and this perception, and this facade of this tough, hard mother. But you're a mama's boy, like you, Straight you up. needed that. But she that, a that, that's most what. Most, most, most people yeah, do. You, sure, if you bro. watch most, any, most, I most people, lie, I do. Dog. you come up underneath hey, any gangster shit, one thing you don't do is you don't fuck with nobody. You don't fuck with mom. Most you feel me? You don't fuck with mom. You don't fuck with you, you, you I mean, in no situation, man. Any you know what? They, at the end of the day, first thing they doing is where, where mom's at. Right. right. I get a little I get a little bit of choke in my, uh. you feel what I'm talking about in my pocket? Mom's what you need. Exactly. Off rip. Right. And I think and that's, that's, be that's, care for that's sure. always, especially people that come from my dem demographics, that's always our motivation. That's what we push for, to make sure mom is good. But the point I was going to make is we, we always, um, I think people enjoy this show because the vulnerability, you know, being able to uh, either express and share that or bring that out of our guests, right? Mm -hmm. that's, people see the realness. That's the transparency. Oh, well, man, you, you feel me? I got it. That, that's hey, I got niggas right here, man. You feel me? That's saying more no. than that. Is that lost, though, Freddie? Y'all think that's lost? Hell yeah. Nah, yeah. What's that? What's that? So what that? What you Sometimes think? What you say, people are prideful and too tough, especially coming from this, 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 in this business. Some guys can lose themselves, but the real yeah. ones know. And the thing is, you know, just, just really going back to, to what you just said, the vulnerability you show in your mom and, and what was your big pivot. And, and, and what got you right and what got you back on track. And even when talking to the young guys about uh, the chickens, mm -hmm. you know, we always try to make sure we have a message for these young guys. Yeah, that's real. The ones, that's the real. high schoolers, the college guys that want to be in this position someday. That's always our message. And for the ones that were lost, chickens is your ducks, your bread, your cheddar, your cheese, your, your money. You got to take care of that shit. Got because to. if you don't, you got these vultures and these people ready to they pray, they're praying on you, they're ready to attack you, and they're gonna take advantage of you. So when I heard you say that, in the middle of an interview, I was like, damn. Hit everybody. Bro, got it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, hit everybody. And he was on the perfect stage right. to share that message. And this platform, that's what we try to do. Right. So for me, having him here, Right now in this moment to 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 vibe and chill. Can I say something? Hold on, man. No, no. you can't. Who are you? No, you who can't. are you, bro? I'm talking, bro. Who are you? I'm so talking. we've yeah, done so so right you know, now. Certain, certain people, right. certain people in your life bring the best out. You've you. never acted like this before, though. I mean, but, <laughs> you yeah. are acting totally different. He acted totally different. They got that connection, bro. It's me and you are see. It's the running. Back we on the outside. Right. And we on the outside looking in. They, the they having a conversation in. and we he, here. He passed me this Dodie. Right, the Dodie, man. <laughs> talk about that. Dodie, man. Talk there, about, no, talk, no, let, let him talk about that real quick. Uh, about the uh, about the Dodie stick? Oh, uh, uh, well, shit, my uh, my cannabis line. Uh, shit, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's been a long time coming. I mean, shit, if, if you haven't, you feel me? If you get through California, you feel me? Well, probably about, I want to say like 80, uh, 80 dispensaries in Cali, but I mean, you know, it's just, like I said, a long time coming. I mean, uh, I don't know for too many athletes, but I know for a fact that, you know, while I was getting down, uh, you know, it, 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 it was a part of my, uh, my regiment of my healing process. Right. You feel what I'm saying? For my body and my mind. And I mean, now I came to the opportunity with shit, I'm done now and, you know, it's legal. Shit, why not get into it? The business side of it, when, when it's legal and they making billions off of it. Straight you know up. what I'm saying? But from the side of the athlete side, the, the kids, the young kids and all, if somebody asks you, when could I start? When should I start? When should I put that in my, like you say, put it in my regiment? Because it's all about game and bro. Yeah. Dude's going to smoke. Dude's going to smoke. They, bro, I but, mean, they, but, they is. But should, 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 a, should a, a, a 10th grader? So I'm gonna tell you like this. What I what I what I have noticed is there's a lot of there's a lot of youths that that get down and blow. And I mean I think it's more of a of a cultural type situation in. You know, I don't feel that if you just 
you feel me, jumping off the porch, you feel me though, trying to do something because, you know, your boy doing it or you think it's cool or, you know what I mean, some 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 fugazi shit and it ain't a part of your genetic makeup, then I'm gonna hit your ass with the say no to drugs. You feel right, what I'm talking about? Right. But most motherfuckers that, if they come to you as a 10th grade and they ask you, when should I start smoking and shit like that, nine times out of 10, that little motherfucker already blowing. Right. Yeah. He already blowing. He just trying to cover his tracks to see like, oh, to be able to say, well, I, I talked to, you feel me though, Marshawn, and he said, nah, he ain't said no shit like that, but you feel me, most motherfuckers that's getting down. But when, when would you, what you got to, when would you discourage it? You said, when would I? Like 10th grade, 9th grade, 8th grade, 7th grade, 6th grade. You know what I'm saying? When, I, when do you discourage it? Mm, oh, you said discourage it. Like, yeah, when would you say, no, bro, it ain't, that, that ain't where it's I, at. I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. If you don't get down, I'm never going to tell you that it's a, a good time to blow no dope. I'll never tell you to. If you already getting down, now there's some shit that's going on in which, you know, you need to make sure that you're able to take care of your business. Right. If this is something that you plan on doing, because I mean, I done seen it, you know, turn motherfuckers, you feel me though, and don't want to play. I, oh, no, I'd rather just go smoke. Oh, I ain't going to practice because <laughs> right, I right. want to go get high type shit. If you, Damn if Nintendo you were, players. If you an individual like that, then you need to leave that shit right where it's at. You Sean, need to go find you something else to indulge in. Listen to you talk. You're a very individual thinker, right? When I think of the success of Seattle. This is this is how it goes for me. And I could be wrong, you can correct me. It goes Marshawn Lynch running game, Legion of Boom, right? A quarterback that could do enough to make sure you you win. When you look at the way you live life, when you look at the way you communicate it to the public, how does a guy like you Become a part of a championship organization, <laughs> and like, and, and like, in and, and, and in my opinion, the the focal point of it. I'm from New Orleans, bro, and I'm just going. What 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 did they what did they call a run? Was it the Beast Quake? Was that the yeah. name of it? Beast right. Quake. They called How it did... Seventeen Power. Right, right, right. So so. <laughs> hey, hey, Fred, don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. Hey, don't do that. I see. Say, hey, so so say, Sean, Sean, come on. Sean, so Ooh. when they call that play against the Saints, what you thinking, bro? Did you think it was going to end up being that, bro? Hell no. Nope. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Right. The first only, thing I, all, only thing I know was since I got, you know, to Seattle, because I got there, what, week four? Yeah. So I just had got traded and shit. And I'm telling them, like, you know, that, you know they ask you, oh, you know what you like to run and shit. And I'm like, power. Mm. Okay. And, oh, okay, you know, we're going to get it in this week. We're going to get it in this week. And shit, what, first round of the playoffs or what? Maybe Y'all thir- seven and nine, right? 13 weeks later. Yeah. They like power. So I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, you done finally, oh, they done blessed me. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, right, Oh, right, they right. finally done, right. you feel what I'm talking about? And then it was like, you feel me? From from there, I'm, I'm just so, I'm so juiced that we finally got the, you feel me? Power call. Now, my, I don't know how the guard going to pull, you feel me? Because we ain't really seen it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, well, shit. I've been asking for it. You know, what you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. Back door, A guy. Man, so when it was time, it was time. Let's get at Then that rest of that shit was history. We was in Buffalo. We played against each other. That was my story comes. It's, it's a good one. But we in Buffalo. You weren't beast mode in Buffalo. Yeah. Nah, you weren't, bro. You used to hang out, you know what I'm saying? They, they, call it beast mode. No, they didn't call it. They had the whole no. little, they had the whole little but, beast mode commercial. But, 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 but yeah. you weren't, you, if wow. Seattle, and, wow. it, wasn't, me, it wasn't, it wasn't that much. Mother- when we come up the, 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 the stairway right now, and the, hey, beast mode. Beast right, mode, beast right, mode. Right, right, right. He wasn't right. that, you feel me? He wasn't Hemothy like that then, but you feel me? In the Buffalo community, oh yeah, Marshawn Lynch, beast mode. You feel me? What, but, but why it did it crank up? Because I, we, we hung when you were in Buffalo. We play, I was in the same division, AFC East. So we, we, we hung. We played twice a year and we hung. And then you went to Seattle, bro, and it, you, you blew up. Why did that? Why did, why, why did you blow up in Seattle? Like, they traded for you. Like, they knew what was going to hold. I don't know if it was 
Pete Carroll, I don't know if it was a success. Like, why did Beast Mode become a international thing when you went to Seattle? Well, I, I mean, just being, I think it was more so the fact that with, 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 I mean, you know, I like to look at the situation from a whole. You just got a coach in Pete Carroll who, uh, you know, had just left SC and all of the shit that was behind that. So everybody, you feel me, want to see what he going to do. And then they go ahead and make a trade for a running back who, you know, at that time, people was, they probably was writing me off by then. Because, I mean, you like I said, you know, my off the field trouble and some more shit. And it's like more so like, damn, why would they go and get a running back who, you know, damn well, damn well like, shit, they probably was looking at me like washed up now. You feel what I'm saying, though? So it's like, okay, it was it was eyeballs on me and the Seahawks because, you know, they want to see what Pete got going on. And then they got eyeballs on me like, oh, okay, well, they went ahead and made this trade for him, like, but why type shit? And then, you feel me, though, through, through, the, through the Beast Quake run, you feel me, though, we knocked off the, uh, you know, the, the, the Saints had just won the Super Bowl the year before that. Yep. And then we knocked that off you feel me though and it's like oh shit off this run that you feel me that, that you talk about arguably one of the best runs in NFL history right hold on is is he for real for real mm -hmm. okay well now this month just registered an earthquake like <laughs> right the whole world type shook though so you feel me like if you could get the world to shake you feel me something gotta be up though you know what I'm talking about like, did I mean, you, did, you know, at, did you know, bro? did you know, bruh? Did you know? Man, hell no, nah, man. <laughs> hell no. Nah. I, I wouldn't even imagine, though. You feel, I, for sure, for sure, I didn't imagine that it would, you know, take me from the level that I was at uh, right then at that time and, and elevate me to the point where I am now. And I mean, you know, to the point where, like, I mean, you know, the, probably the number one, two things that people always talk about when they come and holler at me was three. I'm just here, so I won't get fined. Yeah, uh, they should have gave you the ball type shit and beast quake. So I have a I have a, a question, man. Like you're talking about where you are now. I think, you know. No, I hear you. I hear you. Where you going? I'm finna give me some more uh, water. All right, cool. You get some water. I'm gonna just keep talking though. <laughs> yeah. You got it. See, hey, that's, that's why that's why Sean, we love you, bro. Sean, that y'all look brown though. That don't look like water to me though. Little dirty water. Uh, little dirty water. Hey, All right, so water. check this out though. So like my thing is though, you know, like I've we watched you, no, you right there. I've watched you continue to evolve as a human. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think one of the things that doesn't get highlighted about you is the way you give back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a story of you being detained and having to get out because you had kids waiting. <laughs> for you. Like you know what I'm saying? What no, is no, I think we we probably had uh yeah, we, we probably had six. Yeah. You got 600 that's, kids waiting on crazy, you. Bro. You're in a situation where you know you got to get to them. What makes that so important to Marshawn Lynch? Uh, well, shit, man. You know, at the time, what uh, started our uh, our uh, our football camps and all that shit. And I mean, this was a event in the town that you know was talked about, like you know, all all year. So everybody looking forward to this month. You feel what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I did have a situation. I called a, a, a DUI and hella shit. And you feel me from the time <laughs> from the time for <laughs> I the love hit. the fact that you can uh, laugh yeah, about for, it though. Well, you hear them hear them handcuffs. And all I could think was, damn, you feel me? I ain't gonna be able to get to them kids and hella shit. So the whole time I'm in that's there. That's the first thing that came That's to the mind. first thing that came to mind was I ain't gonna be able to get to them kids. So it was on my, you know what I mean? Like, damn. How I'm gonna do it, not knowing you feel me when they gonna let me out. I beeline straight to the high school though know, in order to get there. So I made it uh probably within like we got two sessions. I made it the end of the first session with like 30 uh 30 minutes left into the camp. What the, what were the kids like, man, when you finally showed like, up? Like, damn, you late. <laughs> Shut up. Like you okay. late, bro. Well, obviously they, they, they don't know what you've been through. Nah, yeah, everybody nah. know they ain't know the media nah, ain't covered. Nah, Nobody nah. knew why you was late. Hell no. Nah. So you feel me? You know, we bring all the kids up at the end of the camp, you feel me though, and holla at them. So everybody, oh, you know, Marshawn, where was you at? What you was doing? So you feel me? You know, I'm keep it solid with my young dudes, you feel me? And I went to jail. And they like, what? Like, oh man, <laughs> like what? Man, what you go to jail for? You kill somebody? Like, what the f like, nah, how, how man. How you think I'm like, gonna be out of jail right like, now? Like, my, my, kids, <laughs> like, look, my kid, my kid, my first session, my kid is six or twelve. So you feel me? They, oh man, like, well, what you go to jail for? Type shit. I'm like, man, well, you know, I had a, uh, 
uh, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was driving under the influence type shit, and they like. Oh man, that ain't shit. Man, my daddy in jail for for murder. What you say? My, my 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 uh my my brother just went to jail. He he just was he just got caught in the robbery type shit. So now I'm looking at him. They looking at me like, oh, you really a sucker though. <laughs> but hey, man, we glad you made it to the camp. And I'm hey, like, hey, hey, so you feel me? Shot, I, hey, he a petty thief. Hey, hey he man, a petty yeah. thief. So, my I mean, daddy you know, in jail for real stuff. For right, sure, right, you feel right, me? So right, they right. looking at me yeah. like I can't. Well, like, man, that's what you was late for. Like, man, you should have been here. And I'm like, yeah, I should have been here. Man, that punk ass shit. Like, <laughs> damn, they woke my ass up. Like, okay, my You're bad. right. You know, that was that was that was a part of that time where that yeah. that, that what year was that thing Sean? was going. Uh that was what, mm, 2012, 13. Wow, that's amazing. Do you um do you keep in touch with any of those kids from from that camp? Yeah, but we actually got a we actually got one of the kids from our camp finna play in the Super Bowl this uh Shut up, bro. Oh wow. You yeah. lying, dog. Why? <laughs> no, I ain't. Can you share his name or? Oh, uh, hey, uh, Mitchell. Hey, 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 wait. He hey, went straight he back. Oh, hey, he went straight hey, back. Hey, hold up. He turned the side on me like this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. I, 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 I was about to jump up. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. I don't want to be. That's my guy. But, That's but my listen, guy. No, no, no. You guys failed. Did you hear the name he just said? The player. Who? We t- I talked about him earlier, and what who what was who was the player? I said, if they're gonna win the Super Bowl, right? Joe Mixon. He has to be the MVP. Joe Mixon. You told me that. Joe Mixon was at your camp. Mm-hmm. Do you guys do you guys still communicate? That, or? That's crazy. Yeah, that little bro. I mean, but you know, just 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 through the you know through the process. Just, I mean, shit. We had a uh, what a couple years ago. Uh, shit, my cousin Marcus played in the uh, in the Super Bowl too, and he probably was one of the first kids that actually. Kicked Marcus off. who? Peters. Uh, yeah. Kicked off. Was that first off? He's one of my favorite players first, in the world. The so. first, the first, the very first football camp that we had. So I mean, you know, just just being in a position like that, where I'm looking at, you know, uh, youngsters who now came through the through the through the uh, pipeline. You feel me? And it, now yeah, they in the yeah. Super Bowl and shit. That's a good ass feeling. Marshawn, we walk in here. I'm a Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Najee Harris. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I think, you know, to go from California, he's homeless, right? And so I'm a huge fan of what he is away from football. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously you go, you rush for a thousand, the type of passes he catches, but to watch him walk behind you and kind of have that, 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 that air of understanding who, um, who you are and, and what you mean to the culture and where he's from, what you mean to the culture of your position, how does that pressure weigh on you uh, to be an example for people? <laughs> not at all. God, I love you. Not at all. I mean, cause, I, mean I love you, Hey, dog. look, man, I, everybody is their person. And at the end of the day, you got to live a life for who you are. Now, at the end of the day, I mean, it's not that I, 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 I don't, you know, I'm not mindful of the situation, but I mean, shit. When you say walking behind and see, you know, what's going on, as we, you feel me though, we link up. And, you know, I look at, I look at, I look at my uh at my boy, you know, on some shit like he helped me create something that I probably wouldn't have, you know, wouldn't have had. Najee. Okay. You feel me? So, you know, coming up, you know, he like, hey man, you know, I want you to help me with, you know, all my marketing shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you serious? He like, yeah. Did you have marketing help? I, I, you said, did so, I have marketing did help? Did you have marketing help? Or, or like, was, I'm just it, here so I don't a, get fined you all you. Mar- somebody marketed the hell out of you. He had Let's to, be though. honest. He's, Snoop, like, he's nah, the Snoop you, Dogg you, of bro, football. Hold on. You, when you say that, what what'd you mean? Like, like was, somebody, was somebody aiding you and was somebody telling you, this is the next step oh, we need to nah. tape in Marshawn nah, Lynch? No, nah, hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Nobody. We don't rock like that. How though, Fuck bro? No. What you mean how like that? Dog, I mean, you ain't commercial now. Like you promote I get involved all this shit that I get involved with shit that I like. Subway with gold teeth and dreads. Yeah. I can't talk about nothing with dreads and bad teeth. You got five <laughs> gold teeth.
Give you a good one. <laughs> hey, out of five, you got marketing and stuff. Hey, but you got, wait, why are you saying bad teeth, though, I do have bad teeth. Because Charles Haley said that your no, teeth are not bad. I've niggas, accepted that I got... They're just very niggas, little. I got, rats, I got raccoon teeth. They're very Too little. Solid, bro. Yeah. I've accepted my raccoon teeth. But, bro, you small. ain't have no help. I uh, mean, as far as the shit that I get involved with, like, I like that shit. So, therefore, you feel me? Yeah. I, it was. I think it was got. It got to a point where it was like, I just was, you know, trying shit. You feel okay? I like candy. I like skill. All right. Hey, uh, you know, motherfuckers got they. You know, they agents and they agents. You know, within the company, they have, you know, the marketing team and shit. And it's like, hey, uh, I like. I like candy. Hey, reach out to so and so and see if they wanna with me. Okay. They reach out to them. Uh, nah, they don't wanna. With you. All right, cool. Well, we got so and so who like you. They wanted to. What they talking about? Oh, they want you. Nah, I don't, I don't do all that mm-hmm. shit. I'm, yeah, good. I'm hand, good. Hands you on, on that. I'm good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So when it comes to it, it's like, oh, well, they wasn't with me. All right, so, cool. Like from the outside looking in, one, I'm a Marshawn Lynch fan, mm-hmm. right? And I'm a guy who didn't necessarily get to be himself until very late in his career. You know, and even in being that, it seemed almost adversarial to the public. But you went to a Super Bowl media day and you said the same whatever amount of words the entire time. <laughs> so no one advised you that, like, you know what, Marshawn, this junk is smart. Who would advise you to do that? Skittles. A dumb ass mother Who would Skittles advise you to do that? Who would advise you not to do that? <laughs> God damn, you want me to tell you? That's care, Subway. They, That's Skittles. They, All these motherfuckers that give you a check, Sean. Look, they, go, they, go, they, they for sure go, if you tell, if, if I would have known that and I, I'm i sitting with my marketing team or whatever and I'm like, hey, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to say the same shit over and over. That's if I had thought that far enough to be on that type of time. But... Hey, yeah, so I'm gonna do this. What you think? Right. They'd be sitting at me looking like. Sean, you, you showed up. Dumbass out of here. Sean, I've been in Media Day two times. I had a booth, and I ain't even gonna lie to you, dog. When they walked me to the booth the first year, I was like, these mother effers then gave me a booth. I'm gonna say whatever the hell I wanna say. We were jacked. Right? And so the second year, we're leading into the lockout, and we're expecting the Green Bay Packers to not do it. Right, so we waiting on that. So you mean to tell me, as important as that time is, Marshawn, you walk into that media day with no plan? I don't believe that shit, dog. Like, I just, and that's like, you know, that's going to be my one curse word for February because I used them all uh, in January on Channing. Nah, but real, real talk. Hell nah, this ain't, this ain't, none of this, ain't none of this shit planned. I told you I'm a running back. I got to improvise. I got to think, be able to think shit. on the fly. I got to be able to. I love that shit. My coach told me. I love it. He say, man, you got this water bottle half uh, half full. Right? Okay. And I say, okay. He like, if you take the top off and you shake it, he say, what's going to come out of it? The water. Everybody say, oh, air. Uh, water. Family. Yeah, everybody got it. And he said, no, what's going to come out of it is what's in it. And I was like, oh, damn, OG, that's some solid ass game. He say, so you think about it. You go and put yourself in a position and you get rattled, shaken up, the true you gonna come out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I Man. always keep that in the back of my mind. So no matter whatever position that I'm in or whatever situation I go in, whatever the whatever the truth about me is, <laughs> when I'm truth? in that situation, is what's gonna question. come out. Sean, what is the truth about you though? What is it, what is it about you, about you that has allowed you to adapt to the atmosphere of what we want football players to be and about what you are, that people love you. Because I'm just going to, and this is me. Y'all can disagree. You can disagree. You can disagree. You had a quarterback who I feel like has meticulously manipulated his persona his entire life, right? Super Bowl, right. Right? And then you have you who has completely been Marshawn Lynch. What made you comfortable in being that and being this successful? Or was being this successful not necessarily your goal and being you more important? To be honest with you, the 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 the, the plan has always been Where you to... come from? <laughs> you hear that?
Hey man, I do this. But the plant, the plant, I'm gonna just simplify. Keep shit simple. The simplest formula I could put it in was just to be able to take care of my family. Okay. And I mean, at the end of the day, I had a, I had a, I had a product that you feel me though that that teams wanted. So I used it. And that shit, just to keep it on shit, lame at times was motherfucker run that ball, run. Run. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I'm 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 gonna cap it off really quick. Oh, no, nah, y'all ain't gonna let I'm gonna tell my story, Freddie. I'll let you tell your story, ass. but let me know. Before you ask, Franny, my dog, tell yeah. your story. No, no, you. I'm gonna let Fred go first. No, no, I'm ending no, it. No, it. No, it because I'm, I'm we about to game. Is the story so, that we good? know we about to game so many people on this story. <laughs> we about to game the league, we about to game yeah. college football, we about to game. So athletes. so I have a question there though. Can I not talk about how Week five of year thirteen. I don't know. Marshawn, because Marshawn Lynch retired me. He knocked your ass out. No, he did not. First off, you knocked his spleen out. What happened? You let, knocked his spleen. Let him tell the story. I thought tell you, the story, bro. Where you going? I thought you had sick. Hold up! You ran into the bathroom. Sean, bro, you, you got me. I mean, I'm trying to drink water and shit. Hey, man. Sean, so, you knocked out his liquor. Hey, so, man, nah, hey, yo, so I'm be honest. I'm gonna be you honest. You want right? to tell the story? You no, want I'm just not. So, so, <laughs> so the first, the first four weeks of the season, I'm going crazy. Right, see. right? leading right, the team see. in tackles, feeling good. So they run a zone read. I don't know who their center was at the time. He tries to cut me. I try to jump. Damn ankle buckles right. So I'm like, you know, you know me though. Like I'm tough. And you gonna put? So I'm trying to walk off. I didn't damn collapse. You know what I'm saying? So we get into the second quarter. Marshawn's running, bro. He hit me. And like, he's never trying to run me over, yeah. right? And the other point is this is, a, I'm not scared of getting run over. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm cool with that. But he got this damn lopsided ass, like, <laughs> did, this you let, did you let him get his foot in the ground? No, that's what I'm telling you, though. He don't, let, don't let him get his foot bro, in the ground Bro, he was now. killing me all night. There was a reporter I almost got in a fight with, because he was like, you couldn't tackle Marshawn Lynch. And I was basically like, God, forgive me, bitch, you tackle him. <laughs> right? Good you know luck. what I'm saying? Like, you tackle him. Liam right? Neeson, good yeah, luck. They'll never so do like, that. They don't let him do that. You know? And so, like, it was like the crazy point in my life is year 13, I'm 35 years old, and I'm thinking to myself, damn, you might not be able to do this anymore. You know, then I finished the year, I have 100 tackles. I was like, damn, I was actually okay. That mother effort was just better than me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Which I'm comfortable with. Nah, but, man, get up out of here, man. No, the fit my favorite story is you, you dog. Is when bro, you dude. walked into the Pro Bowl lobby and goes, RC, don't be on that bullshit, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's the Pro that, Bowl, that's, man. That's part of it. I was always a fan, right? Just sitting over here on the sideline, I saw what you brought to the table. And the first time we met was out here in Vegas. Yeah. With Big Stroud, with Big, Stroud, Big Marcus, yeah, yeah. and uh, my old teammate. And uh, we kicked it. it. It was all love, right? Shout and, out, uh, Stroud. Big Stroud. Shout out. Um, but I'm sitting here hearing you, bro. I see the growth. You know, I see the passion for community services and, and everything you do. I see um, international beast mode. You just growing, man. I love that. Um, you speak about your mother. You speak about the kids and the community. Uh, Channing and I, a few weeks ago, we spoke about, you know, our fathers. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I, I don't know, I, I believe I read somewhere, you know, your, your, your background and your makeup and your father. Uh, what's that dynamic? What's your relationship, you know? I don't want to... Uh, nah, nah, you good. I don't want to overstep. Nah, nah, you good. I do want to ask nah, those questions smoke, because... It's smoke. I know I know what excites you, and I, I understand that it's definitely family, and I've been there myself. But I want to ask you, uh, what's your uh, the makeup, your relationship with your pops? I ain't had one. I ain't had I, re I respect it. I respect. It. Blood was in blood was in jail. Shit, majority of my life, and you feel me. Rest in peace. But uh, shit, he passed what uh, a couple years ago while he was in jail, and I mean, you know, to the whole point where like, yeah, you know I mean, I, I I you know I grew up. You know, I won't say shit. My fags, you know, like real dad at like nigga, my mama, my daddy. You feel what I'm saying though? She played, you know, both parents in the household and some more shit. But you feel me, it was things about me in which, you know, I wanted to understand. And I mean, you know, just getting it from moms, you feel me though, 
it didn't let me get a, a full, uh, you know, a complete, you know, uh, observation of childhood you know, and you family know, of, of, the whole of, of my makeup. Right. You know what I'm talking about? And I mean, shit from, you know, I look dead on the motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying, though? So um, it was a point where I got with my auntie and, uh, you know, I told her I want to get the paperwork to, you know, to go be able to see him. Uh, so I could just have a conversation with him. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I talked to him a couple of times while he was down and, you know, it was always a way that, you know, we could get in contact and shit. And, you know, even from when I, you know, I had got a, uh, I think the last time I physically, you know, lay eyes on him was at uh, my grandmother's funeral. And I mean, I think I probably was in year two or three of the year, I mean, uh, uh, of the league, but, you know, he never asked me, he never asked me for no chicken. You feel me though? He never, he never asked me for no bread. And you feel me? I had folks that you know went to jail and shit. Like, hey, bro, I ran into your, uh, I ran into your dad and then hella shit. You feel me? He hella cool. What he say shit. about you, like, bro? He just like, you know, that's my son and shit. But you know, I, you know, I wasn't there. But you know, I'm proud of him. You know, he, they send the kite. You know, he sent a kite to him when they, you know, touched down and hella shit. So, but I had got, uh, I had got cleared to go in, uh, uh, to go in and see him and shit. So I was supposed to go and see him on a Monday, and uh, uh. You know, that Monday that, you know, I was supposed to go, I was out of town. So I was just going to go the next day. And, uh, you know, for the day that I got cleared and I was supposed to be in there, you know, he got a call. He like, hey, bro, you sitting down? I'm like, yeah. Why? What's up? He like, man, they just called to me that, uh, you know, your dad had died in jail. Damn, and I'm bro. like, ooh, shit. Right. And you feel me? I ain't know how to feel. You know what I'm talking about? But, I mean, you know, through all, you know, all my shit or whatever, you know, with talking to, you know, all the family. Uh, it wasn't until I talked to my my oldest brother that I think it really just hit me. Like, oh shit, you know, this motherfucker, he gone. Right. And I think it was because, you know, growing up, my older brother was who, you know, I looked up to who I wanted to be like and all the shit. So, you know, I think it was just talking to him and me, you know, having that outlook on him as like my father figure. I think that was when it really hit me and shit. And it broke down. And I was like, damn, how could I break down for a motherfucker who, you know, was never there for me, this, that, and the third, but, you know, it, it was a it was a point, like, regardless to all that, like, you feel me, this is my who helped create you type right. shit. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I looked at it at a, at a, at a, at a, a different a different way, a different angle. Right. And because I wanted to go in there and holla at blood about, you feel me, though, just like, what's up? Cause, I mean, you know. That's your daddy, <laughs> that's I your daddy. It, you feel me, but I know, yeah, oh, but boy. you know, I don't know, you feel me, if anything, you know, I know about women that, boy, they, you feel me? They gon' they gonna show their emotions and their feelings and you feel me. I don't know if moms and pops were seeing eye to eye while they were with each other. Bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know moms gonna you know moms gonna you know moms gonna moms gonna you know boy you acting just like your goddamn daddy and shit like that. But you like, I don't even know that. Like, yeah, you like, got to see both sides of the story. And that and was then, yeah. But I didn't, you know, I didn't get the chance to highlight him though. Do you think it'd be different quickly? You think it'd be different if your dad was around? Would, would your life have been different if your dad was there? Uh, do I think it would be different? Do you ever have you ever I thought mean, about like I, no, what, I don't, what if it wasn't this? Place? I don't think it would. I don't think it would be no no different. I mean, you know, but only because I can't say I knew what type of individual he really was on. You know, on some throwing through shit. So if I'm going through something, and you feel me, I got you know a father figure at home who, you know, depending on whatever it was he believed in and the principles and shit that he stood on, you feel me, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm get that would be something that he would try to instill in me. From competitive edge of guys in the league. So Sean, Sean was in, in, the, in Buffalo. In the Bills. And I played for the Dolphins, both in the AFC East. And when he came to Miami, we ride the Tootsies. And when I came to Buffalo, we would go to Toronto. We'd ride to Toronto and go to, what was his name? The little Sundowner or Seduction. <laughs> <laughs> and Sundown we would go, and, seduction. Bro, and it was crazy because we started going and then we went to the uh we, we would go to the to the to the club, okay. we'd hang out. Bro, when we came out, we warm up. So eight games twice a year. Yeah. We hang out, we drink, we so party, kick it. we have a good time. We kick yeah, it, okay. we kick it Saturday night and we call we, I call him as soon as I land, he'll call him as soon as he lands. And then before the game, what would we do? We come up, we Shh. dap up. We're gonna show love. We'll show love and then for the next four hours, we want boys. It was fun. It was fun. Bro, funk. really? We want like we were bored. We hang, we party, party in off season. 
And then once we got in that game, before the game, we both go up to each other and we slap hands and be like, bro, I see you after the game. And Sean hit me in the chest. I, he bruised my sternum. Oh, before. I hear this. Go see, look, man. Because you soft and light skin, What he ain't going to tell you. What he ain't going to tell me, Sean. Tell, tell me, Sean. Tell me. You know, you get, the, you get the scouting report, this, that, and the third. So you, as you reading the scout report, if you look at the scouting report, you're going to be like, oh, okay, fine, do some. All right. You know, he, you know, kind of smaller. You feel me? But, but okay. But it, ain't, it, it don't read nothing special on it. But what they don't put on that motherfucker is, this is a dog. So that ain't in <laughs> the know, in the report. Clear. You feel what never, I'm talking about? Never. So you going off that report, but my mindset at all times was always, I think these motherfuckers finna try to get me. So I'm always on my toes. But see though, what I didn't know was, I didn't know bro was packing punches like that though. <laughs> and every time bro, this is straight downhill. And so every time Fred, Fred tell, hey, look, I know it ain't in the scalpel. But that is a dog. He mean and he get down. Hey, look, but that was that was, you feel me? I there are certain players that I, you feel me, that I that I like just off the respect of what they do, you feel me, and how they get down. And then there's players who who you would never even know. With no name, you feel me, though, no accolades, no nothing. And I respect them more than motherfuckers who got so, names so, so here's my question, accolades though. and Super Bowls and the Hall of Fame and all this type right, of shit. Right, right. But I re I remember when I went and when I went to go and kiss that. Oh, yeah. he came back. He was coming with the shit. And then it wasn't just one time. But that's where that over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. And over that's where that came from. Right. Because when I played against this motherfucker, I knew I had to do that. Because if right. I didn't, then I get my shit woke up. And I wasn't about getting my shit woke up, so I had to come with that shit. But early on, right. this is an individual who, you feel me, well, he not, made, knowing, he made you realize not that. knowing intentionally, like, oh, but this is who I had to go in. I got to go run against this motherfucker. And pass, and you didn't want pass pro because he coming down here. He ain't no goddamn moves. Right. Ain't no moves and no finesse, no nothing. I got some feet, Sean. It's, I ain't it, got no feet. It's right here. It's <laughs> right here. So, ain't so, no crown Look at them rules. shoes. Ain't Does you, anybody that wear them shoes care about footwork? You not, man. You can't nah, care. No, man. You, you can't care about footwork in your damn socks. You know it. With that, with you that, know it. With that being said, right? Um, this is the first show, and we've done a few on the pivot, where we've had someone, not someone, we've had a bad month, international beast mode, vouch for this month. <laughs> yeah, see. Hey, no, no, it's no, no. Hold, hey, up. Man, hold, hold up. up. Hold up. Hold up. Hey, because we went at it. I'm not done. No, no, no. I'm not done. Let me say oh. it. Let me say it straight. I give you roses, bro. Man, I give you your flowers because Beast Mode said it. Man, if it wasn't Beast Mode, that. that shit ain't validated. Nah, hell no. It ain't validated. Game up now. Rap, rap. Let's rap. But when we get outside, <laughs> it wasn't no different. And then it's like, you know, you play against something and they be. You know, they be cool and then they get off the field and then they be cornballs. You feel what I'm saying? Right. And it's like, oh, okay, you a good ass player, but you really a you really a noodle. I've got an opportunity to do a show with uh two of the realest people I know in my life. Um Fred's a Hall of Famer, but he's just an amazing dude. Chan is a dog, he's just like me, he's just super light skinned. Um, this is the first time, man, that I feel like as three of us, we were just so excited to have somebody be a part of our show. I, know, I think I you, we, I think you epitomize what we want to be. Uh, we want to be people who are thought of as one way that move in a different way and create a different lane for people that are just like us, man. So the, there's no way I could ever tell you how much we appreciate you though. Like I think, I think, I think I, you're a hall of famer. I think Chan I got is going to finish off. I think man, I got some. Much love, bro. Bro, we're going to the girl collection. <laughs> you coming? Bro, we, we, we gotta run it back, bro. We gotta run it back, bro. We're going to the girl collection. Man, he's trying to bring it back. Come on, man, let's go, bro. Let, 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 man, let's go, man. Flo, Floyd invited us over there. Oh, man. Floyd bro, opened man. it up just for us. Hey. It, might, it might be 10 of us. Yeah, straight up. Ten of us in the whole that. Man, you can't turn it down. So you know man. I got you know I gotta watch out you for you. You can't turn it down. <laughs> you don't like man. Look, huh? He you won't know he's gonna action. come outside <laughs> with this <laughs> shit, man. Bro, man, great. it's love, man. Yeah, respect, sir, man. man. I appreciate it, man. Oh, like, sir, yeah, appreciate bro. you, baby. Man. It's love. Straight always. Hold up. Limitless, biggest to me, cap in it. 
I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. On the mission, get me up. Knowing me, I got the key. On the vision, I can trust. Trust. Limitless. Niggas send me cap in it. I find the head to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up.